I welcome you this morning to this very strange service, our encounter with destiny service. And I trust God that every one of us will have a definitive encounter this morning that will put our destiny on the right track in the name of Jesus. Our prophetic declaration for the month of August is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in our Sunday services, we started from last Sunday considering our teaching subject for the month, which is understanding how God leads. Understanding how God leads. Understanding how God leads. We are looking at part 2A in this first service. The importance of divine direction in the life of any believer cannot be overemphasized. And we, are, we earlier on introduced ourselves to this subject of divine direction. That every step a man takes in life either takes him forward or backward. Every step a man takes in life either moves him closer to the fulfillment of his destiny or takes him further away from the fulfillment of his destiny. We also establish the fact that one wrong step in a man's life can plunk his destiny to a permanent state of frustration. The same way, one right step in the life of a man can bring about a sporadic turn in the positive from breakdowns to breakthrough. Just one right step. Just one right step. And Satan will always present so many options, so many ways. It is for God to show man the right way. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, he says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Seemeth right. Which means by every human calculation, nothing seems wrong. Everything seems okay. By every physical parameters, by every natural assessment and analysis, everything about that step, everything about that way seems okay. But the Bible says, that way may be a way of destruction. For the end thereof are the ways of death. So it even becomes more difficult when everything by human calculation seems okay. One would have reason to justify himself. So he takes the leading of the spirit to see beyond the physical. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. Does not necessarily mean that God is there. It looks like it, but it may not be it. Hallelujah. God has designed us for excellence, for shining, for outstanding results in life. Unfortunately, many have settled for some directions. They are settled for some ways that ended them up as a mediocre. That is the good will of God. There is the acceptable will of God, but there is the perfect will of God. And that's what we should go for. And that we cannot get except by divine direction. By divine direction. By divine direction. When a student is filling his form, he wants to go to the higher institution, precisely the university or so, or polytechnic or whatever, he has his first choice. 
That's where he wants. He has his second choice. That's his second option. Well, this is what I really want. But just in case it doesn't happen that way, I can manage this one. Then he has his third choice that even if everything is poor, it's poor. Just for me to be somewhere, this is, let me, let them put me here. So he can be given admission for his third choice. He's there not because that's the best he wants. He only needs to be there. Just to say I am in school. God wants us to walk in his perfect will. That's where we become outstanding in life. That's why we need his direction. His divine direction. His divine direction. When we are divinely directed, we end up in the high places, not as a mediocre. His leadings leads man to the high place of life. Deuteronomy chapter 32. You know the story of Jacob from verses 9 to 12 or 14. God found him in a howling wilderness where there is no water. Where there seemed to be confusion. He found him there in such hopeless situation. But he led him about. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land. And in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eyes. As an eagle steered up her nest. Floated over her young. Spreaded abroad her wing. Take them, bear them on a wing. So the Lord alone did lead him. And there was no strange God with him. And he made him to ride on the high places of the earth. The high places, not the low places. Not with the mediocre. The high places that he might eat the increase of the field. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock. And oil out of the flinting rock. Hallelujah. The high places, God's leading leads to the high places. It gets you distinguished. It makes you outstanding. You stand out among your contemporaries. I don't care where you are now. Whether in business, in career, whatever level you are now. As God leads us through this month, you are becoming outstanding in the name of Jesus. You are becoming a global entity in the name of Jesus. That's why all through this month, we have been looking and looking. I will be looking at this subject critically and deeply. How does God lead? Number one, he leads us through the voice of God behind the world. Through the voice of God behind the world. Behind every word of God, there is a voice. And those who are careful and sensitive enough, they pick the voice. That's why somebody can be in his service. And then the word of God is going. The word of God is going. And it's there. And he would come to share testimony. As the pastor was preaching, suddenly God said to me, or oh, I heard God. Behind the word is the voice, which is what we call Rema. That illuminates man and shows him steps to take. We are all in a crowd listening to God's word, but God has individual words to meet our individual needs. That's why when you come before God's word, come with a, an open heart. Come with expectation because it is time for God to speak to you. That's why your spirit must not be distracted. What time is a serious time? Your faith is out. Your spirit man is open to hear your own word. Your own word. Your own word. 
Because behind the word is a voice. The voice of God. In Psalm 119 and verse 105, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Lamp, light, they illuminate. They show you. A light unto my path. It shows me how to, what steps to take, where to go, which way to go. It's a light unto my path. Concerning any area of life. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. The Bible says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. And read. No one of these shall fail, nor shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded, and the spirit is at gather. Seek ye out of the book. That direction, read. There is a voice. Each time you are studying the scripture, watch for a voice from God. Watch for a voice from God. Watch for a voice from God. The voice of the Lord is behind the world. And when God speaks, his word is powerful. His ways are powerful. His leadings are powerful. In Psalm 29 and verse 3 and 4. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. And we do understand that the word of God signifies the waters. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The voice of the Lord therefore is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is behind the word. The waters, the world, the God of glory, thunder it. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Powerful. When God speaks, you get to your peak in life. When God speaks, you get to your peak in life. It is God's voice that makes you a voice on the earth. Watch out for God's word. There is always a voice. God speaks through a voice from his word. Number two way that God leads. Through the voice of the Holy Spirit. Through the voice of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16. And verses 13 and 14. How be it? When he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He's a speaking spirit. He's a speaking, th- he will guide, he will lead. And he's not doing it on his own. He's hearing from the father. What do you have for this, your son? And then the father whispers to him and he whispers to you. When he hears, he speaks. And he says, he will show you. He shows. He shows. He will show you things to come. He will guide you. He will speak to you. He will show you things to come. The voice of the Holy Spirit guides us in every step we take in life. In Acts chapter 8, we saw An example there, verses 28 to 29, concerning Philip. He was returning and sitting in his chariots. And then the spirit said unto Philip, concerning the Ethiopian, you know. Go near. The spirit spoke, so he speaks. The spirit said unto Philip, go near and join yourself to these chariots. Go near and join yourself to these chariots. The spirit said to Philip, so the spirit of God speaks to our spirit man. Speaks to our spirit man to lead us, to guide us in such specific steps in life. So you are a businessman, you are a career man, even as a student. As a student, the spirit of God can lead you and guide you to how to handle your studies. You are preparing for exam. We have had several testimonies like that. The Spirit of God leading you to specific areas. 
showing you things. Praise the name of the Lord. Showing you things. In Acts chapter 10 and verses 19 to 20, the Spirit also speak to Peter. While Peter taught on the vision, after he saw a vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men will come seeking for you. The Spirit spoke to him. The Spirit spoke to him. Hallelujah. The Spirit spoke to him. You can be a businessman or businesswoman and suddenly the Spirit of God can speak to you. Oh, there will soon be scarcity of so-so and so. Gather this thing. We've had testimonies like that. And then bought that commodity and suddenly the scarcity came and then took advantage of that. The Spirit of God can speak to you. Hallelujah. So we are led by the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Spirit. You will hear him. Hallelujah. Number three, through the witness of the Spirit. You have a witness. You have a witness. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, the Bible says, The Spirit is said, Bearet witness. It agrees with our spirit. That we are the children of God. You just have a knowing. You, you, are just, you, are, you, you, you just have a witness in your spirit, man. Agreement. Hallelujah. When somebody mentions a thing in God, they say you should bring witnesses to come and agree with you. To come and confirm what you have said. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When, what, when the steps you want to take is right, the Spirit confounds it in your spirit, man. You have a knocking in your spirit, man. But where you have a kind of trouble, then know that it's a sign that something is wrong. When there is no agreement, there is turbulence in your spirit, man. It may be your feeling. Your spirit is not at rest. Hallelujah. But you want to take a step when you think about that step, you feel good inside. That's the spirit agreeing with you. But each time you think about that step you want to take, there is a check, there is fear, there is turbulence inside. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Acts chapter 16 and verse 6 to 7. Now, when they had gone throughout Pegia and the region of Galatia and we are forbidden of the Holy Spirit. They were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. They were forbidden. They were forbidden. The Holy Spirit did not agree. That's what it means. Hallelujah. After they were come to Marcia, they are, they are sailed to go into Bethnia, but the Spirit suffered them not. He still didn't agree. Praise the name of the Lord. When there is no agreement in your spirit, man, check it. When there is a conflict between what you feel to do and a, another suggestion inside, watch it. Watch it. God may not be there. And number four, how God leads through heavenly vision. God can lead us by showing us certain things, certain events, and then certain directions to take. In Acts chapter 9, verses 6 to 9, we saw the case of Saul. How that he was on his way. We know the story. God has an assignment, has a vision for his life, and God showed him the vision. Suddenly there was light, and he fell, all the people with him. They saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice. Hallelujah. God showed him, and then God spoke to him. So God can show us a vision. God can show us a vision, go communicate to us. In Acts chapter 26, and verse 19, we saw how that was also you know, frustrated how King God showed Paul, we are unto O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed First unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God 
and do works meet for repentance. That was the heavenly vision God gave him. God gave him a heavenly vision. Hallelujah. God is still giving people vision. Fortunately, there are so many things that people see today that is no vision. They are just mere ambition. We must be careful. While it is true that God leads and directs us by vision, but because of the, the carnality of men, so many things that are not from God have been mistaken to be God. And you see everybody seeing all manners of vision. Somebody who has married his wife legitimately after five children suddenly have been seeing one Jezebel about. And suddenly he claims to sleep and woke up and say he saw in a vision how his wife now is a witch. He said God show him And how in that vision, suddenly, God came and took his hand and separated him from his wife. And God spoke to him, run away from thy life. Thou shalt marry another wife. Who shall help you in the work of the ministry? And so he has ministry wife. They claim to be God. All manners of, of things people call vision. And unfortunately, even believers are caught in it. And many people are living their life. They want people to see for them. That's why they run to all manners of places. They want people to see for them. So let's be careful. We are in the most polluted generation. Where the, Satan will use everything to deceive people to miss their glorious destiny. Be careful. Be careful. Number five, true God sent prophets. God leads us through God sent prophets. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servant, the prophets. God lead us through God ordained prophets. God ordained prophets. These are all these are also the days where that word prophet has been bastardized. And then it is merely a title to take advantage of people. That's why we have every place everybody is a prophet. Somebody will tell you he's a prophet and before you know he has opened his shop somewhere for consultation. And people go there to consult. Be careful. But God has God sent prophets who give direction to the, the, the people of God. And God has placed a prophet over this great commission. See how glorious the journey has been. If you can't see anything, look at the commission that you belong to. See where we started from. See where we are. See where we are still going. Why? Because we have a God-ordained prophet that God reveals his mind to part time and leads his people into their glorious destiny. Many of us knew how we came under this commission. Beaten, battered, and haggard. But by constant direction, from God's prophets leading his people to steps to take our destinies of hard color. Hallelujah. So let's be careful. Luke chapter 4 verses 25 to 27. There is a prophet over your life. When you locate where you belong, stay there. That's where your color, that's where your beauty will come up. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months. When great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent. Save unto Zarephtah, a city of Sodom. Unto a woman that was a widow. 
And many lepers were in Israel in the day of Elias, the prophet. None of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syria. There is a prophet sent over your destiny. To help you achieve the fulfillment of your life and destiny. If you have located your place, stay there. Stay there. Hallelujah. Stay there. Don't be here and there. Stay there. That's where your color will come. That's where your beauty will come out. Stay there. So God leads through God sent prophets. Beware of those who call themselves prophets. We have all manners of fake prophets. Beware. 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 Beware where you go to. You go to somebody who is always telling you evil. Is God author of evil? And you see, people have come to, to believe that if somebody have not prophesied evil, he is not a prophet. You go there, they say, don't travel. Don't travel. There is death there. There's death on the way. Don't travel. Don't travel. Don't travel. Don't travel. Don't travel. The greatest business open door that God has just opened for you to go and sign the contract. Say, don't travel. Another one come. Say, don't travel. Another one come. Don't travel. When hunger beat you very well, maybe your spiritual senses will open up. Praise the name of the Lord. Some people are prophets of doom. Everything evil. Oh, this one will die in your family. Oh, that one, this one, this one will die. You, this one, evil. And they tell you, they look at you, the way they look at you, they know you can't fast. They know you can't fast. They say, no problem, I will fast for you because we need to fast for 20 days. But I can fast for you. They will now ask you, Abi, Abi, will you fast? No, 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 no problem. So, go and bring four crates of egg. Two gal gallons of two keg of pure vegetable oil. And very clean white chicken. Five of them only. Praise the name of the Lord. And then you run to go and borrow money where you don't have. To go and give to a so-called prophet. And you still come here with one, two bottles of anointing oil. Carry all the handkerchief in town like man to untie it upon your head. God doesn't work that way. Praise the name of the Lord. It doesn't work that way. Because you are looking for a wife or husband, you know where you go to. Consult all manners of prophets. Consult all manners of people. Because you are so desperate. Because you feel God, God is too slow. And then the instruction you are giving on this altar does not matter to you at all. People are sharing testimony, life testimony of their engagement in kingdom principles. But you don't believe. You like quick things. Fast, fast, fast break. We're in the world of fast break. Everything is fast, 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 fast. So you like fast, fast things. People are saying, as I go on outreach, I was ministering to so, suddenly, my husband located me, he said, I beg. I see how they look for us, husband, he said, make I go, they do evangelism, evangelism. Now, evangelism go stop my problem. To solve my problem, no. I need quick, quick, quick. Praise the name of the Lord. Beware. Beware. How to assess divine guidance? How do we assess divine guidance? Number one, be spiritually minded. Because God will speak to your spirit. So your spiritual life is very crucial. The state of your spirit is crucial. Be spiritually minded. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. True life is in spirituality. True life is in spirituality. Be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded. Mind the things of the spirit. Mind the things of the spirit. Some people are not talent with spiritual things. How will God lead you? How will God take interest in your destiny? If you don't take interest in his own thing. 
Be spiritually minded. Give attention to spiritual things in your life. You are too socially minded. You are so socially active that you have become spiritually dormant. Jump, jump around for any social thing outside. Everybody knows you. Too involved. There is nothing wrong in that. You can be spiritually minded and still be active where you should be legitimately active socially. You must balance up. Everywhere you are there, your village you are there, this one you are there, you are there, you are there. But when it comes to spiritual things, you are zero. Zero. Evangelism, you are not there. Home set, you are not there. Bible school, you have not done anything. Even the foundation school you did 15 years ago, they drag you there. They drag you there. Unit, you are not there. Anything spiritual, they can't count on you. Nobody knows you. You say, but I come to church. Everybody can come to church. Everybody can come to church. Somebody walking by, by water resources now, just see people who are coming inside. Say, make I see what then they do. He comes in, he sees that. Does that make him, you know, a Christian? No commitment anywhere. No commitment anywhere. You can stroll into the church anytime. Stroll out anytime. Nothing more. Some people now, after Sunday now, till another Sunday. And even that Sunday is three quarter service or half. Today now, now waiting there they do today. Now the communion service. Ah, okay. Okay, communion. Ah. We can go sharks more. Even the communion is taken. He doesn't know the spiritual value for it. He doesn't. Everything spiritual, he doesn't understand. He just walk there, walk there, knock his left hand there, America. Or go there, look at him, and pack ten bread at once. One is okay, it's not the quantity. It's not the quantity. God is not a magician. Be spiritually minded. Pay attention to spiritual things. You won't come to church, you won't participate in anything. Just carry the communion and now you carry it. You take it. You, you baptize your head like this. It's not. We are not herbalists here. Praise the name of the Lord. Invest in your spiritual life. Be involved. Be engaged. Be serious. Some people have been born again. Ten years. There is no proof of salvation in their life. Not because they are not born again. But they are not developing their spiritual life. Everything the same. You still talk the same. You still act the same. You see, act the same. They say, How is everything? Oh boy, things not they work. Thing, nothing they work. They say, Don't speak like that. You are a child of God. And they tell you what thing they happen. I'm a child of God. Now, MBC, I go lie. I know go lie. I say, Things no good. It's bad. If you won't kill me, kill me. I don't know what thing be the problem. They shout on me. Shout. I say, No good. The same thing Paul said when I was a child. I spoke as a child. I taught as a child. I acted like a child. Be spiritual. How can God speak with you to you with this life of malice? So childish. You are in church. You are a member. You are keeping malice with almost everybody. Any little thing, malice. I don't talk to this one. No, I don't. No, no. I don't. This one. I don't. No, I don't talk to this one. I don't talk, I don't talk to this one. Who, who do you talk to? God can't even talk to you. Because you are still keeping malice with God. Your inside is just, you know, turning eight time. God wants to speak to you, you can't hear. You can't hear. Praise the name of the Lord. Be spiritual. Let me push your neighbor and say be spiritually minded. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Bible says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually designed. He can't know them. His spirit man is not mature. There are certain things you can't be telling your four-year-old child now. There are some, certain things, they are truth, but you, he can't understand. He can't understand. 
He can't understand because he's still a child. He has not developed. His mentality has not developed. He can't. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how some people are. They are spiritually babies. Their spirit man is not developed. And so God can speak to them some certain things that will post open their destinies. Be spiritually minded. If God opens up the breakthrough he has for some people now, that breakthrough will kill them. Because their spirit man can't undo it. They can't undo it. If God just shoots them up like this, they are not, you see, the arrows that will fly, their spirit man can't take it. Praise the name of the Lord. Be spiritually minded. Number two, have a genuine crave to be led. Have a genuine crave. You see, crave to be led. Desire to be led. You are thirsty of God's leading. Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with your heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't rely on what you know. What you know is limited. Don't pride in your certificates. You can be a very good scholar. No problem. You can harass all the academicians in your field. But when it comes to the issue of your destiny of your life, God has the blueprint. Oh, I'm a first class candidate in so 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 field engineering. I was the best student in my class and in the whole set. Man, I was given a meritorious award. That may not even be the area God wants you to tread for your destiny to open. Have you not seen people who are doctors that ended up in water factories and are making waves across the earth? Lean not on your own understanding. Don't try to calculate God. Don't calculate God. Your brain and my brain is too small to calculate God. Praise the name of the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Hallelujah. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Be willing to be led. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. You shall seek me and find me. When you search for me with your whole heart, not haphazardly, not holding to your own ways. No. And say, call on me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Great and mighty things. If you are ready to be led, I will lead you. Open up. Have a genuine crave to be led. And number three, open up to the revelation of the word. Open up to the revelation of the word of God. The word of God is light. Just like we said in Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Open up to light from God's word. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Don't settle in your own understanding. Just open up. Whatever the word of God says, let it take preeminence in your life. It takes the settled word of God to settle man's destiny. Hallelujah. What are the biblical proofs of being led by the Spirit? Number one, you enjoy pressure-free life. Pressure-free life. It doesn't pressurize you. There is no pressure. If it is God leading you peace, no pressure. No pressure. Proverbs 3, 16 to 17. Length of days in his right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her parts are peace. No trouble inside. No pressure. God is not an author of confusion. He won't be leading you and then you pressure here, pressure there. You've heard God's servant, the apostle over this ministry. We don't pray for money here. We, we only make sure that God is leading us in anything, any step we want to take. If it is God, God himself will supply. Because every vision has its own provision. 
So if it is God, God takes over. No pressure, nothing. Construction of the ark is going on. Nothing is affected. Pressure free. Every other thing is going on. Projects are going on diversely in several places across the globe in our ministry. Nobody knows such kind of gigantic project is going on. No pressure anytime, anywhere. Because it is God's hand that is leading. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When God is there, there is no trouble. Peace, pressure, free life becomes your portion in the name of Jesus. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3, he says his commandments are not grievous. No, they don't grieve people. They don't bring pain to people. No, they groom people. They bring joy. They bring fulfillment. If it is God, there will be no pressure. There will be no pressure. There will be no pressure. Number two, proof of being led by the Spirit. A state of supernatural joy. A state of supernatural joy. Hallelujah. In Psalm 89 and verse 15, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. If, it is, if they are walking in the light of your countenance, they must experience joy. If it is God, joy will be there. So anything you claim that God is leading you to, it will give you joy inside. You just be excited at it. You just be excited at it. Anything you claim God is leading you and you lose your joy, watch it. God is not there. God is not there. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1 to 2, wherefore, sin we also are compassed about with such great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. If God is there, even in the midst of challenges, you maintain your inner joy. Something just tell you, oh, the light is about to break forth. Hallelujah. Joy is a proof of God's leading in our life. All through this month, God will lead you in the name of Jesus. In every area of your life, you will not suffer frustration. In the name of Jesus, I ask God to open your spiritual ears that you will hear each time the voice of the Spirit when it is speaking. You know, sometimes, some things happen. And then you hear people say, ah, and something was telling me, oh, have you ex had that experience before? Ah, and something was telling me, something, something, that is the something that you didn't really know. It is the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you, oh, take this step, take this step, now, 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 now. It's, ah, and I, I was, something was telling me, oh, but I really didn't, didn't take too much notes. I ask and I pray that all through this month, your spirit mind will be open to know the voice of the spirit that will lead you into your desired breakthrough in your destiny. If you believe it, shout it louder. Amen. Amen. Well, today is our encounter with destiny service where God has ordained us to, God has ordained to launch us into our destiny, our glorious destiny. Hallelujah. I'd like you to know, God's people, that behind redemption is the mystery of predestination. For every child of God, before you and I were ever created, our destination was settled. God always finishes before he starts. So before you and I was created, our destiny, where we are going, is already settled. Where our destiny will end is already settled. So if you are a child of God, God is not just trying to organize you. No. Before you were ever born, your purpose, your destination in glory is already settled. And that destination is a destination of beauty. That destiny is a destiny of glory. Romans chapter 8 and verses 
29 to 30. Romans chapter 8 and verses 29 to 30. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate. That's pre means before. And destinate means your destiny, your destination. So before you were born, before pre, he has already set to your destination to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, he settled where they are going. He then called them and justified them. That's your redemption. And after justifying them, he marked them for glorification. Them he also glorified. So you have a glorious destiny. Not a destiny of shame or reproach. So I don't care what is happening to you now. It's temporary. It's temporary. Your destiny is already settled. So where you are now is not your bus stop. It's only a passage. I didn't hear a louder amen. So don't settle there. Don't preach your tent. Don't accept that experience as your faith. It's not your portion. Whatever negative thing you are passing through now, it's not your portion. It's only a place. Weeping me and dear for the night. But surely, joy comes in the morning. He makes all things beautiful in his time. God is working on you. Don't let the enemy harass you. Don't let your mockers harass you. Don't let your mockers harass you. When you see an accidented car, get to the workshop. You won't like it. You won't like it. It looks ugly. It doesn't look beautiful. And all that. And the Panabita is beating it out. And then, you know, beating it, beating the Especially when they remove the headlamp and all the lamp. The car looks like a witch. Praise the name of the Lord. Later on, when they fix all those things, respray, that same car will pass in your front. You look at it, ah, this is the newest model of this car. That's the one I want. It was the panel beating. The car that was being panel beaten yesterday. So I don't care what is happening in your life right now. God is panel beating you to put you in shape so that the world will celebrate you. That shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. So don't let anybody mock you. Don't let anybody speak you down. Hallelujah. He asks you, you say you are serving God. And you don't have a job. Smile and say, God is at work in me. God is working. God has not yet finished with me. Oh, where is your husband? You are not married up to now. Don't worry. God is, God is still working. God is at work. God is still at work. He has not finished. Let him finish. I will soon invite you. Praise the name of the Lord. So let no man mock you. Let no man speak you down. Let no man make you feel as if God is late. God can never be late. He may not come early, but he's a present help in time of need. Hallelujah. So your destiny is a glorious destiny. Irrespective of the negative happenings now, you are ordained and predestinated for glory and beauty. Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear the loudest amen? In First Peter chapter 1, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. God has called us to a life of glory, not shame, not reproach. You are not to be pitied, you are to be envied. In the order of Isaac, in Genesis chapter 26 verses 12 to 14, to be envied. Everything about your life is expected to be envied. To be glorious. To be glorious. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. How do I fulfill my glorious destiny therefore? Knowing that I have a glorious destiny. Number one. Have a genuine heart for God. And the interests of his kingdom. Have a genuine heart. Love God with your entire heart. Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Go all out for God. Love him with your heart, with your soul, with your spirit. Hallelujah. This is the greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. 
So if you love God with your heart, according to Matthew 22, 36 to 40, then expect the strangest dimension of blessing that no eyes have seen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him, that love him, that love him. So love God with your heart. Have a genuine heart for God and his kingdom. And then God will open you to strange realm of attraction of your destiny. Number two, remain open to the world for direction. Be a lover of God's word. Be a lover. Anything about God's world, let it attract you. Running Bible school, be there. Some people have been here now for years. They have not attended Bible school. Some only attended BCC, which is about 20 years ago. Syllabus have changed. Go and refresh. And your children, they are finished. BCC, LCC, LDC, they are finished. And then you who introduce all of them to it. BCC, you did it 20 years ago. You can't even find your certificate now. Praise the name of the Lord. Go back and refresh with LCC. Go and refresh with LDC in case you have done LCC. Be there in your home fellowship where we share God's word. You can hear God's word and you too can share and be a blessing to somebody. Hallelujah. Be open to God's word. That's where your inheritance is. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Be open to God's word. He said, and now brethren, I commend you to God to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Take time to study God's word. Pick relevant books that will, under, that will help your understanding of God's word. So many books. You want to understand divine direction? Pick all those books of the month. You want to understand the operations of the Holy Spirit? Pick those books and sit with your Bible. And take out a word adventure. And then your spirit man is fired. And then the voice of God will begin to speak to you in diverse direction. Hallelujah. Number three, be committed to a life of prayer and praise. Be committed to a life of prayer and praise. Be prayerful. Genesis, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. You want God to lead you? Be prayerful. You want your destiny to be fulfilled? Be prayerful. Call on me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things we down where it's not. Be prayerful. When you are prayerful, you will always receive inspiration. Every platform of prayer be there. Our congregational prayer be there. Covenant our prayer be there. That sharpens up your prayer life. And then gradually you see your destiny open up in a ground star. Be a praiser. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 29. Learn how to praise God in every situation. You shall have a song as in the night. When a holy assembly is kept and gladness of heart. As one that goes with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord. To the mighty one of Israel. Then. When you have a song, you hear the voice. Verse 30. He said then, you will hear a glorious voice. The Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lightning down of his arm, the indignation of his anger with the flame of a devouring fire with scattering and tempest and his soul. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. You shall have a song and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Live a life of praise. Stop living a life of grumbling and murmuring. Learn how to praise God. You wake up the first thing that comes from out of your mouth. Father, I just thank you. You are good. I celebrate your goodness. In every situation, Lord, I thank you. You are faithful. Learn how to praise God all the time. Change your language. Change your language. You wake up again the moment you step out of the bed. Ah, Now, wow, today don't start again. Man, go start struggling again today. Some people have complained too much over the years that they don't know how to sing. They don't know how to say right things. Ah, it's everything. Things are just... We are struggling. How is your work? We are patching. What of your children? So-so. Your wife? 
problematic. Negative things flow very easy in their mouth. But to praise God is a problem. Change your attitude and your altitude will change. Hallelujah. Please understand that your destiny is glorious. And whether the devil likes it or not, you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. Today is a communion service and this communion will be opening our eyes and our spiritual ears to hear him. Hallelujah. By this communion, your spirit will become sensitive to the voice of the spirit. You will not miss it again in your life. I say you will not miss it again in your life. Every pollution in the spirit man that has the propensity to block our access to his voice shall be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. And if anyone has come here with any kind of sickness or ailment, whatever it is, by this communion, it shall be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. If there be any manipulation against your glorious destiny, maybe they have tied down your destiny anywhere, some people manipulating you. You know there are so many kinds of manipulations. There is what we call the spirit of error that is orchestrated from the pit of hell. Some people, they are, each time they are just a verge of breaking through, Satan makes them to make an error. Just one error. That sweeps away that opportunity. He's just about being promoted in his place of work. That is when he goes to insult his superior. And he ends a query. Praise the name of the Lord. He's about having a massive breakthrough in that business. He, Satan just makes him to make one error. And then he has lost that glorious opportunity. The spirit of error. By this communion tonight, everything that the enemy is using to manipulate your destiny, it shall be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. I decree this encounter this morning over this life will show speedily in the name of Jesus. Let there be quick testimonies reflecting in every area of your lives in the name of Jesus. I decree this week is declared blessed for you in the name of Jesus. No one here will take any wrong step this week in the name of Jesus. Favor will attend to you all the way in the name of Jesus. You will receive a call of blessing this week in the name of Jesus. Everyone here is secure throughout this week. Every journey is served. No domestic accident. In the name of Jesus. Go and return with your testimony. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, accept, ex expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. And let everybody say, Amen and Amen. God bless you.